Okay, okay. All right. Hey, what's up, y'all? And of course, welcome to another Alternative Factuals video. All that good stuff, all that jazz. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6 again. I know it's going to be a second video, but I'm kind of trying to introduce more people to this concept because there are not enough channels talking about it. And I had to do a little bit of research for this one in particular, mostly because this particular topic, there's nothing really based in Marvel Comics regarding these specific objects. But before I dive into any of those details or anything related to, uh, you know, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the monolith or whatever, please be sure to like, share and of course, subscribe and uh, leave your comments down below let me know what you think let me know your theories about the monoliths and what you think about this concept regarding the monoliths and all that stuff now i'm going to give you a little bit of a warning a lot of this information has not been you know solidified in terms of facts but there has been some speculation and this is not even necessarily really a theory but this is just a kind of gathering of information and basically i'm giving you this information to kind of see what you think about it and you can form your own uh, theories and your own uh you know trains of thoughts and ideas based on you know what you think a monolith could possibly even be but um obviously based on what i just said today's topic is going to be the history and the origins of the monolith as well as what are their purpose in marvel's agents of shield so let's kind of jump into it all right so the monolith so in marvel agents of shield you know the monoliths each of them kind of have their own kind of i guess purpose or they actually achieve to manipulate one aspect of reality in the show so what we've seen so far in the show are the monoliths that are basically the original monolith that was black the gray monolith the white monolith and uh, the black monolith basically and uh, these monoliths well these are four objects which allow individuals to travel through time and space uh, and achieve very various different purposes and you know various different things for you know whatever reason that may happen now even though we're six seasons into the tv show we have not gotten any information on why the monoliths do what they do their purpose and we just know that people have been using them for different various reasons hydra to retrieve their hydra god um some people have accidentally used it like the agents of shield and traveled forward through time as well as simmons accidentally traveling through space and meeting the hydra god and sleeping with him and all that stuff which i don't want to get into right now but they all serve different purposes for very very different reasons so I kind of want to dive into some information that is, like I said, always in every video that I do anything theory related. This is public information. I'm not revealing anything that's a secret or something that you shouldn't know. But um, this is basically just a gathering information. So that way you can form your own theories and see what you think about it. So that way I can kind of hear what you guys have to say in the comments about it. So across the whole entire world, you know, geologically speaking, you know, monoliths are very common or not really necessarily completely common. But in terms of the shape and kind of the dimensions, the way that they kind of appear in Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they do appear that way on the planet Earth, all over the places, you know, stone hinges and all that stuff. They're considered monoliths. Now, this does happen naturally and, you know, it could just be from, you know, several reasons like erosion or just simply, you know, some form of acid rain and some of them can form by oceans. They can form anywhere, basically. And in the real world, obviously, they do not have any special abilities, at least none to our knowledge as of yet, unless you're a conspiracy theorist and you really feel like they might be tied to something specific. So what I want to get into is historically speaking through a lot of myths and lores, monoliths usually had a very specific purpose and a lot of people in a lot of cultures believe that they were tied to very supernatural things or things that kind of taken place that were a lot weirder than science can initially explain at the time. And I think that's what this, you know, the show is drawing inspiration from, as well as a book called um, Mono Space Odyssey, basically. Um, and this is a book, um, basically, well, the book, like I said, is literally called Space Odyssey, and it's written by Arthur C. Clarke. And basically, the, the monoliths are these machines that were built by extraterrestrial species. And in the series of the novels, you know, this is basically centering around the monoliths and what their purpose was. They were discovered all across the solar system by humans and, you know, usually the monoliths usually have direct contact with specific characters in order to achieve a specific goal at the time and in this book in particular the first monolith appears at the beginning of the story and is really set in prehistoric time basically where you know these hominids or you know previous versions of mankind start to kind of come into the play of you know this time period and the monolith triggers some sort of considerable shift in evolution and then that's when we started using machines tools and started using you know inventing the wheel and discovering fire and basically forming weaponry and i want to use this concept to kind of break down what's going to happen in terms of 
you know, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. when it comes to these monoliths. So basically just how like in the real world, culturally speaking, you know, and all over the world that these monoliths or these, you know, stone hinges or whatever you want to call them, even though they believe that they had specific purposes, you know, supernaturally, of course, and they came from somewhere, some way, shape or form. Um, there's a book about it kind of exploring that concept. And in this book in particular, like I said, the monoliths that are black, extremely flat, non-reflective rectangles and solid. Basically, it sounds exactly like the ones that are inside of um, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And basically, they can survive for millions and millions of years they don't take any damage they don't erode they don't do anything like i said they sound just like the ones from marvel agents of shield and this one in particular too the black one they can experience massive amounts of impact damage and then somehow they actually don't really take any damage at all and they do have some sort of you know low level radiations but none that is extremely effective towards humans that cause them to you know have any adverse effects to them now just like in the tv show it is very unclear on what the composition of the monoliths are they're clearly you know very massive machines and obviously they're origins do not take place on earth but their primary function or at least the one that we've seen initially introduced into the earlier sections of the book is that it kind of alters you know whatever life force or creature on that planet and then they develop an extremely quick rate so this is what i want to dive into now in this show we've seen three monoliths and obviously they all have different purposes now i'm not going to say like i'm completely sure that they're going to somehow jumpstart evolutions on the planet however this could be kind of what they kind of serve in terms of their purpose to some degree now even though i feel like in the marvel Agents of shield tv show they're going to say like you know evolution kind of happened naturally for the most part that the monoliths did have some sort of involvement when it came to introducing different types of life forces to various different planets because what we've seen is I think two of them actually just allow you to travel distances across space and as well as you have one of them that calls you know calls you to travel distances across time and for some reason I feel like they might be able to merge and then they'll be able to do various different things across space and time so this might be a very interesting perspective in terms of what the monoliths can achieve to do rather than instead of helping them directly involve in evolution or you know helping progress life forms forward ultimately I feel like what is going to happen is simply that they when they combine or somehow when they work together that they do have a fundamental effect on various different creatures across the solar system the galaxy and that their purpose kind of works as a way to help progress or kind of monitor things between these life forces that they've had some sort of involvement with at least whoever created these things a part of me would even dare to say like possibly that uh it could be the celestials who made these kind of monoliths or these specific pieces of rock or machine or whatever you want to call these things in order to see how these creatures kind of interact with them and see how they affect the people that they've kind of been around for millions and millions of years so this could be a celestial thing who knows but also this can be primarily like i said an experiment whoever created these monoliths and whatever purpose that they're supposed to serve that they can kind of use this as a way to kind of either jumpstart humanity or have some sort of involvement with you know various different types of creatures humanity um aliens whatever you want to call them as well as they can also serve the purpose of helping people who created these things kind of get to certain destinations and that they were lost in time somehow and then now they're affected people across the galaxy fighting for such a powerful machine or simply just to kind of gain massive amounts of power in short amounts of time now one section of this book also that i kind of want to address that i think is a stronger possibility compared to you know anything else that i've described previously is that the monoliths were basically a method in terms of for whatever alien race or whatever being created these monoliths they can use them to judge you know humanity or different um, alien creatures and see who was worthy of survival and let's say hypothetically that um we have azelle for example she said originally that the monoliths were stolen from her and that she was the one who initially had them and she's been around for thousands and thousands of years so let's say they came from her dimension let's say this is kind of the way that she can go around judging world and seeing like okay this world is chaotic this world is you know it's kind of spiraling out of control and because they're spiraling out of control i need to come to this planet i need to massively wipe everyone out start off on a clean slate and then basically they have to start all over again from basically evolutionary theory where they start from a little single cell organism then somehow grow up into these complex creatures now to wrap things up so that way it can kind of condense and solve down into a single point what exactly is the point that i'm trying to make one the monoliths could be built as a way to judge other planets or judge mankind or whatever alien race that lives on a very particular planet 
in order for some sort of creature or being or even a zell to come and judge them and see if they're worth even still keeping around two it is very much possible that the monolith serves a very specific purpose to help increase the evolutionary development of particular planets which allow them to de develop different weapons or get access to different weapons and see how they're able to use them and utilize them in terms of the intelligence and relevance of the particular species that takes place on that planet three they could be solely responsible for a lot of evolution on different and various planets at different times which would kind of explain the reason why other alien races are a lot more advanced than others because the monoliths didn't stay there they had to travel around and go to different planets and obviously that takes time and traveling through space can be very long and extensive so basically they have to take time to travel to different planets which is why other races would be more advanced than others and vice versa so it is very much likely that the monoliths serve a very specific purpose and manipulate very specific parts of reality because they have to achieve this evolutionary development of different extraterrestrial races. And I think honestly, even though it's it's likely, but also I think all it can serve as a judging reason where you combine combine the two and basically they help develop the planet and then after a certain amount of time they judge the planet and if the planet does not come up to a certain standard the planet will get taken out by whatever being created the monoliths and so on and so forth and thus the cycle keeps going but let me know what you think about these aspects of the monoliths since there's not a lot of information in marvel comics or in the tv show i kind of want to take some of the lore and that we have in the real world and combine it with what people explain in like novels and what they believe is going on and how they dive deeper in depth with monoliths and stone hinges so that way we can kind of form our own analysis here but if you're new to the channel please be sure to like share and of course subscribe and leave your comments down below and i hope to see you later on peace out